Hi, welcome to Daily. Thank you so much for checking this out today. Hope you're having a good day wherever you're at, whatever you're doing today. We're gonna read Galatians 4 today. I'm gonna say a quick word of prayer before we do. God, thank you so much for your word. I just believe that there's a lot of things in this chapter, more than we can even comprehend. So would you send your spirit so we could just understand what you want us to understand at this time? And it might be different things for different people, but Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts today, wherever we're at. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so-called gods that do not even exist. So now that you know God, or should I say now that God knows you, why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? You are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or season or years. I fear for you. Perhaps all my hard work with you was for nothing. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things, for I have become like you Gentiles, free from those laws. You did not mistreat me when I first preached to you. Surely you remember that I was sick when I first brought you the good news. But even though my condition tempted you to reject me, you did not despise me or turn me away. No, you took me in and cared for me as though I were an angel from God or even Christ Jesus himself. Where is that joyful and grateful spirit you felt then? I am sure you would have taken out your own eyes and given them to me if it had been possible. Have I now become your enemy because I am telling you the truth? Those false teachers are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. They are trying to shut you off from me so that you will pay attention only to them. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right but let them do it all the time, not just when I'm with you. Oh, my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again, and they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. I wish I were with you right now so that I could change my tone, but at this distance, I don't know how else to help you. Tell me, you who want to live under the law, do you know what the law actually says? The scriptures say that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the, prom the fulfillment of God's promise, but the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. These two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai, where people received the law that enslaved them. And now Jerusalem is just like Mount Sinai in Arabia, because she and her children live in slavery to the law. But the other woman, Sarah, represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman, and she is our mother. As Isaiah said, Rejoice, O childless woman, you who have never given birth. Break into a joyful shout, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband. And you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise, just like Isaac. But you are now being persecuted by those who want to keep the law, just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. But what do the scriptures say about that? Get rid of the slave and her son, for the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free woman's son. 
So dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman. We are children of the free woman. Well, previously, I had just asked you about kind of the question of why you're going to heaven, trusting in religion or trusting in relationship with God. Fascinating one in this chapter that I'm not going to cover, but this issue of Abraham with Hagar and with Sarah, with Ishmael and Isaac, the idea of these two different paths. Fascinating. Take time to reread that if you haven't. It is so amazing. In fact, it's crazy to think about the reality of that because literally Hagar had Ishmael. Ishmael is the beginning of the Muslim faith, which of course is very religious by nature, that we accomplish something in order to have relationship with God. And of course, through Isaac comes Jesus, who brings about this idea of grace and forgiveness, completely different polar opposites through this one man, which is just astounding. But what I want to talk to you about actually is this relationship between the Galatians and Paul, because it sounds like it's just a commentary on their relationship, but it is perfect application for us, okay? Basically, he says that at first when he shows up, they had this great relationship, right? Verse 12, he says, you did not mistreat me when I first preached to you, even though he was sick. He's like, I was really sick. It was hard, but you end up taking me in. He says in verse 14, you took me in and you cared for me as though I were an angel from God or even Christ Jesus himself. He's like, you cared for me so, so much. But he says, now there's a different feeling. Listen to what he says in this. He says, verse 15, where's that joyful and grateful spirit that you felt then? Verse 16, have I now become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? He says, listen, there seems to be a different tone from you. And the only thing that I can see that's really changed was that at first when I came, you were just excited to see me. I preached the gospel to you. But he says, now I've written you some stuff and I've said some stuff about your life that's really challenged you. And now that I've spoken truth into your life, it feels as though I'm not in your good graces anymore. It feels as though you're not grateful for me anymore. There's this tension. He says, am I becoming your enemy just because I've spoken this truth into your life? In fact, it's interesting because he compares this with the people who've been there, these false teachers who kind of want this religious system in place. He says in verse 17 about them, those false teachers are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. He says, there's people there and you think like, well, they got your back, right? They're the ones who understand you. Paul doesn't understand you. He's just mean, but these guys get it. But he says, you know, there's something really, really wrong with those people who are there speaking into your life. Did you catch it? He says, they're trying to win your favor. They're trying to win your favor. And here's the difference. He's like, I'm not trying to win your favor. I'm trying to win your heart. Those people are trying to have a good relationship with you. I'm trying to get you to have a good relationship with Jesus. You see, there's an issue if the person who's speaking into your life is simply speaking into your life with the goal of making your friendship good and not the idea of the truth that's in this, right? Paul says, I care about you so, so much. I don't think you get it. I'm not saying these things because I dislike you. I'm saying these things because I love you. Verse 19, he says, I feel as though I'm going through labor pains again. Like basically saying like, just like a mom has this terrible pain to bring this child to the world. He says like, I'm going through this agony trying to bring you to life. Here's where I want to kind of bring this around to us, okay? All of us have people in our lives who are like the, you're all good, it's all good, let's have a beer, let's relax, friends. And all of you have friends like this. But listen to me, these people aren't supposed to be your spiritual advisors. I'm not saying you shouldn't have some of those friends who just love you so much. Paul's saying there's a danger in these people that if, if their primary conversation with you is just to win your favor for you to like them, for you guys to get along, they're not the spiritual advisors you need. He says you need someone who's willing to speak truth into your life. Listen, we need to have somebody who is in our life who we ask them what they think about our life and they go, here's the truth. Here's your life. It looks like you're being an idiot. And we go, wow, that's really offensive. We go, no, it's great because they're actually speaking the truth into our life and we need that at times in our life. You have people who you can lean into that you know they're just going to be like, you're all good. You're great. But those people aren't the spiritual advisors we need in our life. We might want them as friends, but we need somebody who will speak into it. And listen, he's saying that a fool is somebody that when somebody starts speaking truth into their life, they push them away. He says, if I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth, some of you, you've done this. You've pushed people out of your life who are good spiritual advisors because they called something out on you and it offended you, so you just made them your enemy instead of actually listening to it. 
Reflect with me for a second, okay? Do you have somebody who you trust spiritually who actually is willing to speak the truth into your life? And are you inviting them to speak into your life? Or the situations that you're in currently are going to be in, do you just go to the people who you know are going to give you the answers that you want to hear? That it's all good, we're all good, let's grab a beer and relax, people. Do you have people who actually will say, here's the truth, here's your life, let's consider it? Or have you pushed those people out of your life? Act, okay? Take a step today. Here's what I'd love to invite you to do. Don't just ask advice from those it's all good people. If you're in a situation right now, if you're in a season right now, you need to pursue a conversation with somebody who cares enough about you and has a good enough pastoral, spiritual basis to actually show you the truth and bring challenge to your life. If you don't have that person yet, you need to find who that is. You need to reach out to your pastor, if I'm your pastor, whoever your pastor is, and maybe ask what they think of the situation. Don't just keep listening to the people who are like, it's all good because they want to win your favor. It could lead you into destruction. Move forward by faith today.